So welcome to this class. Anyway, okay, dismiss. Okay. Yeah, it's recording. Okay, so let's go through some of the um, information that we need to go through about what this module is about scripting for bioinformatics. So you will be using a lot of your computer. So um, I've already asked you to install your Anaconda. So that should be installed. We'll use that first and bother about this. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you already have your study guide. Anybody do not know where to get a study guide? Anyone? Uh, LMS. Okay, your study guide is and the information is all there. So your study guide is under this study guide. Okay, so the study guide. Um, lecture materials, I put up first and second lecture only. So your tutorial one is already up. Tutorial, your second tutorial I have not put up yet. Okay, so this is where we find all the information. Okay, so let's go through first this study guide. Now, essentially what you need to learn, obviously, please do not call my office, you get nowhere. Okay, you can email to me or WhatsApp me, it's much easier that way. I'm the only person conducting this whole um, series. Okay, so the whole module is taken by me. So any problem, just come and look for me as well. Okay, the purpose of this subject is really to train you on programming concepts. Okay. It takes a long time to learn programming, but at least on a very fundamental basis, you should know some programming concepts. How do you design um, some codes? How do you write scripts to solve problems? The focus here is on solving problems. Okay. We are not going to test you or ask you to memorize a lot of things, as long as you can solve the problems given to you. So it's mainly, we try to apply it to biological data. So there are four main sections to it. We have the introduction, what is programming language and so on. Fundamentals, how do you use programming language? Okay, and the language you're using is Python. So Python is a programming language that was first started in um, 1989 or so on. So it's been quite a while already. Okay. How do you write functions? And then lastly, we use this module called BioPython which should be installed in your Anaconda already. Okay. So later we'll see whether it's everything installed properly. You can try as we go along. Okay. For this module, you realize that there is no distinction between the lecture, practical and tutorial sessions. In fact, it's all just a blur. Okay. The three sessions is just mixed together. With the only problem is next week, we, we lose two hours because of our Next Friday is Labor Day. Okay, first me. Okay, so the teaching plan is essentially here. Um, you have your term break. Okay, so we leave the last two weeks. In fact, flex week we still can use. We leave the last three weeks for you to do consultation before you start your SIP. Okay. So by next week, I'll release your assignment, and then on week four, I'll give you your project. Okay, so your assignment is actually due about one month's time. Okay, and the problem is there are two holidays here. So the two Fridays, we can't lose it already. Okay. So far, any problems? Can somebody just type in the meeting chat so that I know that you are alive? Okay, no. All right. Just a few people, make sure that some most of you are alive. Okay, so how do we assess this module? Um, there are three big blocks of components. Your learning portfolio, your individual assignment, and a project together with peer evaluation. So this project consists of different parts as well. Your learning portfolio is essentially like your logbook. And so you record your learning process, you can record it as a Word document. So these are the questions that helps you. Okay, basically, it's almost like a reflection document. Okay. 
So you have to do it on more or less a weekly basis. Um, the submission is actually on July, in July. So you actually treat it as a physical entity for you to record your information. You can post your codes, you can post anything, it's up to you. Okay. At the end of the day, because it's going to be a, let's say a Word document, at the end of the day, you can even print out okay, as the first logbook they're going to have. And you can keep this logbook continuously as long as you stay in science or whatsoever. Okay. I, for myself, I have my logbook since my um, graduate days. So it spans a few thousand pages now. So this is very important because you will actually help you consolidate what you have learned. And one of the difficult part with learning programming is trying to figure out what have you actually learned from that. Assignment two, individual assignment. So this, we are, I'll actually give you a piece of Python code. It, the Python code will not be too long somewhere between half a page to one page. Okay. For you to do things, review and critique. Okay. So why do I want to do this? Very often, you do not have to write everything yourself. Okay. As a bioinformaticist, most of my time, I actually need to, if I want to know what to do, I will go online, use Google and find out what other people have done as well. Read other people's code, this is how you learn. It's just like reading novels to learn English. So you read other people's code and actually see how their codes can be used in your own work. Okay. So the example is this BioPython tutorial. We can go to BioPython tutorial and we'll see how it looks like. Mouse, mouse, mousey, mousey, mousey. Okay. So we'll go to, a, let's see, for example, if you want to learn BioPython yourself, yes, that's also easy. That's also doable. So it'll teach you how to do, for example, um, how do you read FESTA files? How do you read GymBank files? Okay. How do you write files? How do you do multiple sequence alignment and so on? Okay, so it's a lot of different methods. So let's say we go and say that, okay, can I do sequence objects? Let's say, can I do transcription? Yeah, let me go transcription. It should explain a bit of transcription. Then it shows you codes of how to actually do it. So these are codes of how you actually do it. These are examples, which means that you cannot actually take wholesale what the example gives you. You have to look at these examples and try to make sense of these examples as well. And how do you use it in your codes? So translation, you can do that. For example, I have, what is this? You pack unambiguous RNA. So all this has a certain meaning. Okay. You can read from different files. You have different translation tables. What you have learned in molecular biology is um, the genetic code is called the universal genetic code. But actually, there's more than one genetic code. Okay. Anyone actually even know that there's more than one genetic code? Okay. So you see, there's actually a mitochondrial genetic code. And the standard genetic code is this. So there are differences. Okay, so all these have a lot of examples. The main thing is how do you read these examples? How do you use them in your work? So that is where this assignment is important. Okay. So the pur what I want you to do is to write a short report. What is the purpose of this code? About well, 20 to 50 words. How does this code works? You can somewhere between three to 400 words, maybe even shorter. Yeah. What are the positive and negative points, good and bad points about this code? So the percentage is also given to you here. Okay, the marking percentage. Finally, there is a project. So the project is a group assignment. Since there's 15 of you, we will have five different groups. So three in groups of three. Okay, anything more than groups of three, you probably will end up some of you doing a bit more work, some of you doing a bit less work. So you try to keep it more even. So the 50 marks, the 50 points, 
Okay. So you can actually remember, see that this project is half of the module. Okay. The project report is 20%. Okay. The group presentation, which is individually assessed, is 10 20%. And your two other friends in your team will evaluate you for the next 10%. Okay. So there is no class participation. Your class participation is really your evaluation by each other, by your teammates. All right. The main purpose of this project is, is to simulate what you have in your SIP or major project. Okay. You're given a bioinformatics problem to solve. And the question I'm going to give you is very, very brief. This is where you can come and talk to me and we will look at what do you know. Okay. Don't, the main thing is try to do um, some research work first. Okay, on the topic that are given. So um, this still have to go through the whole vetting process, so I cannot let you see how it looks like at the moment. Okay. For goodness sake, make sure that you submit your assignment in time. Okay. And this is more likely going to be an online submission. Okay. So the actual details of the assignment will be given in the assignment brief. And how I mark it will also be given in the assignment brief as well or in the project briefing. Okay, makes sense? So far so good. Okay. Any question? So far so good. Ryan, yes means what? Or that your yes is just now, no. Okay. Okay. No major questions. All right. Okay. As far as currently is concerned, let me show you how the project brief looks like. This is not the final version yet. Some of the questions. Okay. So this is how it looks like. So this is the type of project that I'm intending to give you. You can take a quick read. Okay, it's not confirmed yet, so don't take this as the, the final work. Maybe this is the web layout. Okay. So this may be the halfway work. Yeah, so these are my intended purpose of the project. Okay, so this gives you some basic idea of what I'm looking for. Um, I will give you the final outcome later. Okay, so three deliverables. What do you have to write? And so on. And then I will give you the marking scheme as well. So you look at the marking scheme. That's about it. OK. Yes, no, any problem? All good. OK, so if someone want anyone want to speak out in class, you can unmute yourself. Just tell me who you are because I can't recognize all your voice and you'll talk. OK, so let's get started now. How many of you actually launched Anaconda by yourself already? That means you know how to deal with Anaconda and so on. Anyone? OK, so what I have is a YouTube video. Just go and Google me. Um, OK, what you do is you go to YouTube. Slash, I think user. User, yeah, then type my name in. Yep, for the whole of last week, I'm busy recording YouTube videos. Okay, so this is my video. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is go to playlist and then look for, let's say Python programming, and you want to go for um, bioinformatics, it's also possible. Go to Python programming. <clears throat> so the first one is to show you how to launch Spider and customizing the planes. I leave it up to you to through.
Can you hear the video? Can you hear the YouTube? No, okay. You can't hear the YouTube. Hmm. No idea how. Okay, so anyway, um, you know where to find it. So if you if you forget actually how to do it, you know where to find it. So we will not bother about this first. So I'll show you how to actually do it. <clears throat> okay, you go to start, then look for Anaconda, this Anaconda. Okay, click on this uh, drop down list, and you go to Anaconda Navigator. Okay, I want you to go to here first instead of directly to Spider because we want to check something here. So you go to Anaconda Navigator. It will take a while because there's a lot, quite a fair bit of scripts to run through. <clears throat> okay, so main thing is go and watch my YouTube videos. You want to subscribe, it's also possible. Um, if there's anything that you want, you'd like me to record, anything that you'd like me to use a video version on YouTube, uh, let me know as well. So you can drop me a message on WhatsApp. No guarantee that I have, I have enough time to record, but I'll try. OK, so your Anaconda Navigator looks something like this. OK, are all of you here? So this is for you to do it as well. So let me continue. You go to environments. Okay, environments, what you need to find is um, you. Okay, so let me just go here. You search for the package, it's under environments. Right? You search for the package called BioPython. Okay, BioPython should have a tick, so it means that it's installed already. Okay, so it shows that it's installed. So most of you will just have this base root, that's fine. OK, so what you want to do is go to home again. These are the applications that's available for you. Um, you yep. So let's go and launch Spider. Okay. If you don't have launch Spider, you have the one that says install. That means you have not installed Spider. So just launch it, so you will launch Spider from here. Okay, so this is Spider. <clears throat> Okay, anyone still not at this point? Installing BioPython, okay. But I think when you're installing BioPython, oh, okay, it's still installing BioPython, all right. Um, okay, then let's wait for a little while. Okay, so while we're at it, this is um, the introduction is really given to you. This is a three credit unit subject. For your third year, for this elective, you have three times three credit unit. So uh, that's nine. So this is already more or less spoken about. Okay, anybody still installing BioPython? Or Okay, Rebecca, Rebecca, are you okay? Okay, so how do you learn programming is this. The way to learn programming is practice. 
So anything that's on the lecture slides, if you do not know, keep practicing. So for example, let's say this is today we are talking about primitives. So I, I will use this screen to actually just show you. So the first four things that we're going to look is values, operation, calls and assignment. So simple values, all data has to be stored in a what, what if I cannot find BioPython? OK, me still installing BioPython. OK, so if you cannot find BioPython, this is what you will look like. OK, you, okay um, you go to all. So in here you go to all and you type BioPython. OK, so BioPython in your case is not thick. Because just now I only look for those that installed. So if let's say, for example, I want to um, install another library, what I do is I, I will click on it. Then it actually apply. So you install or don't install. Okay, so I don't bother with this. Still don't have. Hmm. Which version are you using? Okay, so um, hmm, you... But Irvin, you say you are installing BioPython and now you can't find it. Okay, try to update the index. At least for the first few lectures, we don't need BioPython. All right. If you update the index and see whether it's BioPython there. Okay. The main thing what I want you is to launch your Anaconda first. Oh, well, not Anaconda, Spider. This is more important. Okay, found it. Okay, so spider, what you have is, so I'm now jumping a little bit here and there, depending on where everybody is. Uh. Okay, so spider, these are called individual planes, planes, P-A-N-E-S. You can um, change the size of the plane, or you can move the planes around. Like for me, since we are going to use this IPython console often, I like this plane to be larger. Okay, so how do I change the plane? I go to view and I click off these lock planes. Click off it, and I move the planes. Let's say I move this plane into here. So now it is sub, it's merged with the editor plane. Okay, so now I have a, a larger space to work with. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, then I lock the planes again so that I don't mess it up again. Okay, so far so good. Now, if you play with the planes and everything got totally screwed up, don't panic. All you need to go is go to this window layouts and you click on spider default layout. You will jump back to the original version. Some of you may have last semester or rather last year you have done R programming. Some R. So you can actually, if you, are, if you like the R Studio layout, you can use the R Studio layout. This is R Studio layout, if you remember. So it's up to you. Okay. Just that personally, I kind of prefer my console pane and my editor pane to be merged together. So it's much larger for me. Okay. So it's up to you. This is the main thing. Okay. So for those who are already here, let's type this thing called import capital B bio. Okay. Python is case sensitive, which means that case is important. Space is also very important. You type um, import bio, see whether is there any error. Okay, if it goes out directly to, it means that there's no error. That's fine. Anybody got an error? An error will look something like this. 
This is called error. It tells you module not found. So when you type bio, if you want to go back, just go up and down your cursor. Okay. Anybody have problems with my have? My have means what, Rebecca? Yeah, yeah, uh, what am I trying to, what you want me to say? Do you have error or no error? It's having exclamation sign on the, at the side, you have error. So is the error says, uh, Najib, not really an error, but yeah, okay. Uh, we'll sort that out later. So, uh, Nabil, your error is module not found, right? Yep, okay, so don't bother with it first at the moment. Okay, until we come to, we need BioPython, then we deal with it. Okay. So let's say so far, all data has a certain values. Okay. So the four different, four simple type of values, your Boolean, Boolean simply means yes or no, true or false. Integers, float and strings. Anybody can Remember from your set one maths what is integer and what are floats? Anyone? <clears throat> what is an integer? Oh, wait, I'm fine already. Okay, Rebecca, you're fine. So, what is that? Okay, question What is an integer? A number. Um, yes. Just mean a number is correct to some extent, but float is also a number. In you seldom use the word float in maths. Um, okay, which one can be fraction? Integer can be fraction or float can be fraction. Float is sometimes known as this thing called real numbers. So which one can have a fraction? Which one cannot have a fraction? Anyone still remember? Float can have a fraction, yes. Float can have a fraction, have a decimal point. Integers cannot have decimal points. Integers are basically counting numbers. Yes, Ambrose is correct. In floats can have decimal, integers can have uh, only whole numbers. So integers are essentially counting numbers. All right, string simply means, string means um, words, characters, and so on. It means just words. It can mean alphabets as well. Python names are case sensitive. Okay, so for example, I say that, um, let's say I type my name. Okay, okay in, in maths, you tend to put x equals to five, right? This is very often you have in maths, x equals to five, something like that. Okay, so what does it actually do is, it takes the value of number five, and put it inside a memory space called X, like a pigeonhole. So in why spider is useful because it actually tells you now X takes the space of an integer. Okay, look at this variable explorer. It takes up the space of an integer. Okay. So for example, I can say um, my name. Let's say, if I want to type a name, I will use inverted commas, type Morris. Okay, there's a string. So now my name is a string, str is a string with the value of Morris. So if I want to call out, that means I want to call x. So I say x plus x. What should I get? Mathematically, x plus x, what should I get? Ten, correct. So x plus x is ten because five plus five is ten. Okay, but 
Why, what does it mean by case sensitive? I cannot use, let's say, capital X plus capital X. It tells me capital X is not defined. Okay. Make sense? This is what I mean by case sensitive. Um, so try not to use items that you do not know whether is it um, case sensitive or not. For example, I can type in capital I and small l. Capital I and small l is very similar to each other. Don't mess it up. Okay. So some alphabets are very small, close to each other. For example, O and O. Don't mess it up. Okay. So Boolean is essentially only true or false. True is true, false is false. I mean, that's a bit oxymoronic, but we actually use it as a comparison. Okay. Now, because true and false also means something. Now, if I say true, it will give me true. I'll put true. If I put false, it is false. But this true and false, you realize that it must be capital T and capital F. Otherwise, it's not recognized. Like here, it says name error. The name true is not defined. That means you don't have it yet. Make sense? Yes, so you get an error when you import, Bio, import BioPython for Irvin. Um, that means BioPython is not installed properly. But okay, we'll, we'll settle that later. Okay, so far, true and false. So, so these are very important. We can even later we'll see how true and false can be used when we compare two numbers. Okay. okay, integers can be positive, can be negative as well. It can even be zero. So this is quite important. Float, on the other hand, will have decimal place. Now, because I cannot write something to the power of what, I write e to the power of something. So e here simply means exponent. Okay, e sim means exponent, it has it is not power. Okay, so for let me show you how does it look like. So if I type here 2 e4, it will give me 20,000. Okay, it is not it is different from what you write in maths as 2 times e to the power of e to the power is, where is my e to the power of 4. It's very different. Okay. This e is not defined here. Okay. So this is what you have to remember. This e means exponent rather than the base um, the base number for natural log, natural logarithm. Alright, so far so good. Any problem? Okay. So at the very simple sense, you can use Python just as a calculator to begin with. You can use it as a big calculator. Okay. You can you, your, your regular scientific calculator can run out of space, but Python seldom run out of space, although it can. For example, I say that 2 to the power of, let's say 100. Okay, you just say E 200. But you can try your calculator. You cannot type 2 to the power of 100. Okay, because your calculator is maximum is 2 or is something that means let's say 9 to the power of 99. That's the maximum a calculator can go. Right? Okay. So I can say that e to the power of 100, I multiply, multiply in this case is asterisk, just like in Excel. Okay. And let's say three to the power of fifty. 
you give me a large number, that's all. I can even say, okay, another way to type E exponent is I say 2 to the power of 100. So double asterisk means to the power of. This is um, this is actually two to the power of something. This is actually the exponent. This is two times ten to the power of one hundred. So it's that it's different. Okay, so let me write down here. E one hundred. So if you want to type comments, comments is pound sign. Any that means Python will ignore everything after that. So this is equivalent to two times ten to the power of 100 okay while e uh, 2 to the power of 100 it simply means 2 to the power of uh, what is the x, x 2 to the power of 100 so it's a different value okay one exponential one is just um, multiplication You can have negatives as well. So let's say 2e minus 5. You can just see how it looks like. Let's say 2e minus 5. Okay. Um, that means that's to a small number, 2e minus 3. Okay. So it is a it's actually 2 times 10 to the power of minus 3. This way you get 0 0.002. Because very often we want to work with very large numbers. And it is not feasible to just type out the number uh, number of zeros. We just use E to represent. Okay. So far so good. Any problem? Oops. Okay, so why not you try a few other calculations to see whether does it make sense or not? You cannot, similarly, you cannot divide by zero. Huh? Let's say two divide by zero, you have a zero division error. Okay. Basically, you cannot divide by zero. <clears throat> All right, any problem so far? As far as numbers is concerned. What is syntax error? Syntax error basically means grammar error. Okay. Syntax error was, for example, in, if let's say I, I, I say two to the power uh, of um, two, you give me a, Zero. Okay. So syntax error. Let me think. Huh? For example, you mistype something. Okay. So let's say. Okay. So what can you show me? What what do you type to give you syntax error, Rebecca? Ah. So one four o nine e. It tells you that it's syntax error because it is expecting something after that. So it actually points, this carrot points to where the syntax error is. Because it's expecting 1409 times 10 to the power of, and you never give it. Okay. So you can type, if you really want to be kind of playing around with it, you can type times e to the power of 1, okay, times 10 to the power of 1, or you want to be itself, right? It's times 10 to the power of minus 1. That's itself. Huh? Okay, do it divide. Or you times 10 to the power of 0 also can. Okay. So syntax error. Syntax error is the over umbrella for every a lot of things that you cannot catch, even spelling errors. Okay, certain thing, like for example, I want to say uh, print. Print. Let's say my standard hello world. 
print hello world. But let's say if I misspell print, which sometimes you can, it gives you a name error. Or when you have things like you open a bracket and you forget to close it, it will give you a continuation to ask you to do something. And then you give it the wrong thing, um, then it gives you a syntax error. Okay. Another thing, for example, if you open your bracket using a square bracket, a round bracket, and then you close using a square bracket, it is mismatched. So it definitely gives you an error. Yes, number must be added to your deck. Correct. Okay. So in essence, syntax error is grammar error. Python just simply doesn't know what on earth you're trying to do. Okay, the next thing is strings. Or um, strings, it is simply means characters or alphanumeric characters. In Python 3, it can also be Unicode characters. However, try not to use Unicode that often. It may just slaughter you. Okay. Any characters, including space. Okay. So how do we define string? We define string using single or double quotations. So I can say that I can define string as, let's say, I type my name. This is how I define a string. Okay. I can also define it using single quotation. And both of them are acceptable. Now, so which one should you use? Single quotation or double quotation? Which one should you use? Doesn't matter. Technically, it doesn't matter. It's requesting. Okay, let's see what Ambrose is trying to show. Okay, Ambrose, where are you? Uh, both can. Yes, both can. Uh, I have no idea what Ambrose is trying to do here. Okay. Yes, both is okay. You can be single or double quotation is fine. So Ryan prefers single. Okay. Um, frankly, most of the time it's up to you. But stick to one convention. In the past, I like double quotation. Then I like single quotation. Now I go back to double quotation for a very simple reason. A lot of my work deals with text processing, word processing. And word processing, you always tend to have single quotation, truncations basically. For example, I type in this. Okay. I don't eat. Let's say, what on earth do I not eat? E coriander. Coriander. Okay. Do you see the error here? this it will give me an error because it's invalid syntax right because the truncation don't from do not actually used up closes the statement already so if i have truncations apostrophe s and so on i have to use double quotation marks so that it recognizes so this is the only reason that I, why I go back to prefer using double quotation marks. All right. Now, what happens if, let's say you want to type multiple lines, multiple lines of text. Let's say you want to type a poem. You can actually have multiple lines, just simply use triple quotation marks and you type. I like to eat news fruits as yes. durians kiwi and bananas. 
This is called a multi-line um, string. Then I close it with triple quotation marks again. Now it prints out. Instead of printing out triple lines, it actually have this slash n. Slash n that means a new line character. Okay, but it's actually recorded as this way. All right. The reason why I want to show you this is because sometimes when we copy and paste, we copy and paste gene sequences which have hundreds of lines or even just five lines. We need multiple lines to, to store this up information. Okay. All right. So spaces are also known as a character. These spaces are important. They are also known as character. Now, what happens if I do this? Let's say um, number A equals to 10. Number B equals to 10. One, 10. Okay, question. From here you can see because of the quotation marks, it actually number B is technically recorded as a string rather than an integer. It is how you define between string and integer. Make sense? So if I say that number A, I multiply by 10. What do you think my answer will be? I'm sure you can do this. 100, correct. I take number B, multiply by 10. You can, you can, that's the problem, you can. Just look at what happens. It gives you this. It basically multiply this word by 10 times. It's not 100, it just multiply this word by 10 times. So the same thing is, it will look like this. If I type my name, I multiply by five. It just five times of it. OK, so don't make such mistakes. You have to know whether it's a string alphabet and a string uh, integer float and so on. OK, now the reason why there is such difference between a string integer float uh, Boolean is because your microprocessor that's inside every computer stores information in this thing called registers. Each register has a certain byte size or bit size. A string can only be stored in a certain way. A integer can only be stored in a certain way. Okay, this is a hardware problem. All right. Okay, so we we have actually settled the first part, which is the basic data types. Anybody have any problem with the basic data types first? That means at least you can use it, use Python as a big calculator. You can use Python as a, a word multiplier, even if you really want. But how do we compare? So for example, is A equals to B. So we have a few comparators. The four major types is a numeric comparator, logical comparator, uh, comparisons operator, and a string operator. So numeric will just be addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, power, floor, division, and modulus. Okay, anyone do not understand any of these terms?
anyone, any, especially um, floor division and modulus or modulo. Floor division. Okay, let's try. So let's say um, we have 32. 32 divided by 20. The answer is 1.6. Okay, you all know that well enough. Or let me make it simple. 16 divided by 10. There, okay, first let's come to here. There is no difference between 16 divided by 10 and whether it's a space or don't have a space. Okay, but I prefer to have a space so that it makes reading a bit easier. Now, if I have floor division, let's say 16 floor division by 10, the answer is 1. Modulus. 16 modulus 10, the answer is 6. Okay, if you go back in your older days, when on earth you actually learned that 16 divided by 10 equals 1.6? Which level? Primary 1, primary 2, or primary 3? Sixteen divided by ten gives you one point six. It's only provided you learn the concept of decimal place, all right? If you haven't learned the concept of decimal place and you give a primary one kid sixteen divided by ten, what will the answer be? It will be one. So sixteen floor division gives you the integer part of the game. Gives you the integer part of the game, while the modulo gives you the remainder. Okay. This gives you the remainder. Hopefully you remember what on. Okay, wait, can repeat. Okay. I will just type here. Um, this is a, a thunder coming. Okay. So 16 divided by 10 gives is the whole number version, whole number part of the division. 16 module, oops, what on earth did I do? Yeah. 16 modulo 10 is the remainder remainder part of the division make sense because you remember before you learn um what you call before you learn decimals 16 divided by 10 equals to one remainder six correct this is the floor division answer. Modulo is the other number after the decimal. Um, it is the remainder after the decimal, uh, remainder from the division. So this one is actually the floor division part. The modulo gives you this six. Yes, to some extent, it's a number number that's remaining behind after division. The only the only way that I can explain to you is think about the days whereby you haven't learned um, decimal place and you know this concept called remainder. Is that is what it's, it means? All right, and this can be very useful actually. Okay, so these are basic math operation. Of course, you can you can also use brackets. Brackets are also important. Okay. So for example, I say that 100 divided by 2 divided by 5. Okay, what do I expect to get?
100 divided by 2 divided by 5. 10, right? Yeah, it will give me 10, correct? Okay. But sometimes in order to make our life a bit easier, I will prefer you to use brackets, even though it is a little bit unnecessary. Okay. Because having brackets makes your life a bit easier to read. What they do. Having brackets makes your life a bit easier to read. So 100 divided by 2, then divide by 5. It makes your life a bit easier to read. Obviously, if you want to do the reverse, for example, you want to do this because it, the order of operation is slightly reverse, then obviously you need brackets. Okay, 2 divided by 5 is um, 0 0.25. So 100 divided by 0 0.25 is 250. So it helps you. I always encourage you to use brackets because otherwise it's going to be messy. OK. So why not you go and do this? Make sure you can try each one. Um, OK, in your lecture notes, these three uh, carrots, right? Treat it as though it is the same as this word here. Now you see these three carrots because in the previous type of lecture, we actually use this. For example, here I type Python. Oh. Python, 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 Python is not here. Okay, don't worry. Let me just go to another one. My Anaconda and Python prompt. Okay. So see this where the tree carrot sign is this uh, this actually where the cursor starts so why not you try this and make sure you can get the correct answer okay, you have it for lecture notes <clears throat> you just take off so now it's about 2.05, just about 5, 10 minutes to try. You can go to the toilet if you want to. Do you have a lecture before this? Yes, what lecture do you say? Um, structural bio or, script, uh, or sequence analysis. Okay, sequence analysis. All right, so you can go and take for a toilet break and we'll come back in about 2.15.
So how do you like to be studying work, studying work from home, studying at home?
Okay, is everyone back? Is everyone back? Yep, Ryan is back. Good. Okay. All right. So, so then the next thing we want to look at is this thing known as logical operators. Logical operators has only three, is not, and, and all. Okay. So in the way we use logical operators is we want to look at different operations. Okay. So for example, when you have not true, not true that means the opposite, not means the opposite. Not true means false. Not false means true. Okay. So you have, if let's say, not true means false. Not false means true. Not false means true. Okay, so these are the two basic ones. Okay, not. N is N will only be true provided A. Okay. Um, let me put this. A and B will only be true provided A is true and B is true. Okay, so how do I, how do I look? Let's go to the example on the slides. True and true will only give you true because both are true. Okay, but if one of them is false, it will give you false. That means true and false is false. False and false is still false. Okay, so for N, you should be able to understand it. N requires both conditions to be true before it's true. When one is false, it's always false. Okay. Or is, is a bit more flexible. Or is only one requires to be true. A and B, A or B, only one requires to be true. So true or true gives you true. True or false gives you true. False or true gives you true. Only when false or false gives you false. Confusing enough? Do you manage to catch everything? Okay, so spend the next two minutes or so, look through these few examples. Try to absorb it because you'll be using this quite often. <coughs> Okay, if you have friends who are doing engineering or you have friends who are doing computing, this is what you know as a truth table. Okay, this is actually a truth table. So let me just type in Excel. Um, I'll show you how it looks like. So let's say we say that this is A, this is B, okay, and then this is column C is A and B, okay. So we say that this is um, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, okay. Do this table. Okay. Okay. So one means true, zero means false. Okay. This is something I've not explained. One is true and zero is false. So one is one equals to true. One is equals to true. Zero is equals to false. Okay. Zero equals to false is true. Because the statement is true. So, true and true will always be true. True and false will be false. False and true will be false. False and false will be false. Okay. So, we, if we have A and B again,
we say A or B. In this case, <clears throat> true and true or true gives you true, true or false give you true, false or true gives you true, false or false give you false. Like it is in engineering and in computation, comp Boolean, Boolean algebra is called truth table. So these are the basic ones. Okay. Not is essentially A, and then it just not A. Okay. So not will be. It's actually the inversion. So not not true is false. Not false is true. All right. Manage to capture this. Capture this concept. Someone respond. Or if you are still confused, also let me know. Okay, Ambrose. There, I'm barely hanging. Um, well, it depends on what you're hanging from. From grades. Well, uh, I can only say try to back up. Can you explain line 13 to 15? Okay. Not is essentially the opposite of what you give it. So true, you give it true. Not true is false. If you give it false, not false is true. It's essentially the opposite, the inversion. When do you use not? Um, actually, very often. We will actually see in the next few slides. When do you use not? Yeah, we, we actually see in the next few slides. When do you use not? Okay, let's say for example here. Is ATG not in this? That means does it have a start codon? So ATG is in this sequence. That means it will give you false. It, it depends on how you want to do your um, calculations. Minecraft redstone into use. OK, I don't play Minecraft, so I have no idea what you're talking. OK. So far, so good. All right, so this is the last one that I'm going to ex go through. This is called your comparator. Comparator, there are five, six different types. Equal, that means is something equals to something. Okay, why you cannot use a single equal? Because single equal is called assigning. For example, I say that x equals to 10. I am actually assigning 10 into x. Okay. But I want to check is x equals to 15. Obviously, because x is 10, x is not equal to 15, right? I will check, check x is x equals to 15. This will give me a true or false answer. So x being 10 is not equal to 15. So it will give me false. OK. So this is the part whereby don't mess it up. You can mess it up. One is assigning, one is compare, comparing. Double equals is comparing. So very often you see me write in even my WhatsApp message, I use double equal is comparing. Okay, once this is the kind of thing that you have to build your brain around it. Okay, not equals. 
when you write not equals, let's say in um, what you call this, in maths, right, you write something like this, A not equals to B. How you write this not equals in computer? There's no short sign. So you have to write A not equals to B. So far so good? A get run off. Okay, so I can say is X not equals to twelve. Because X is ten, is it not equals to twelve? It will be true, right? X is not equals to twelve. So this is a true statement. But if I say X is not equals to ten, it's a false statement because X actually is equals to ten. All right. Okay. Greater, lesser, and then the equals to. Okay. Same thing in maths. You can say that a is greater or equals to b. But this greater or equals to we cannot type on the computer quite readily. Okay. So we we use this symbol greater or equals to. Okay. Similarly, A smaller or equals to B, we have to write it as this. Okay. So let's say we say that 5, is it greater than 5? Is 5 greater than 5? Yes, no? True or false? False, correct. It's false. Yep. But is 5 greater or equals to 5? It will be true, right? Okay. 5 is greater or equals to 5. See? What, what, what did I just do? This symbol, you cannot invert it. Ah. You cannot invert this symbol, okay? You give you a syntax error. Okay, so it's four, or rather, it's five less than five. It's four. It's five less than close to five. It is true. But similarly, let's try to invert this symbol. See whether it works or not. It will give you an error as well. So. This symbol is, you treat this whole thing as though it is one symbol. You cannot pull them apart. Okay. So, this, you treat it as though it is one symbol by itself. You cannot swap it. Huh? If you do this, it will give you a wrong answer. If you do this, it will give you a wrong answer. Okay. It's a syntax error. So far, so good. Okay. So why not you try this for yourself? Is two equals to five division two? Floor division two. Okay, see whether you can get all these answers. So far, any problems?
Okay, can you understand how to do this part first? Comparator, that means you are at slide 14. Okay. Because I will not go to the string operations because it is, um, it will be a bit too heavy for you at this moment. All right, any issues so far? Any questions to ask? Who is your class rep anyway? So just like sequence analysis is by Dr. Chan. Has she assigned a class rep? Long -ter. Okay, good, Long -ter. So you are in. Bo, no. So you have a violent objection. I don't know. He anyhow the okay. Okay, let me put it this way. Has class rep been assigned? Or in this in this class, who has been class rep before? As you know that your care person for the everyone is different now. I don't think anyone in F1 is here. Uh, anyone in F1 here? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, we I will ask. So who will decide who is a class rep or somehow we have to decide, but. We'll see. So at least for this session, we don't really have to for the moment. Okay. Um, what is what can be useful for all of you is. Oh, Justin is treasurer. Good. Okay. Um, anyway, we will sort up. You can start to form your own groups if you want. Groups of three. Okay. Um, the only person that is not from biotech is actually Jasmine. So Jasmine is from pharmaceutical science. I'm sure you know already. Uh, don't leave, make her left out. Is Joanne still overseas? Joanne, are you there? Are you still overseas? OK, you're still overseas. Um, technically, we can complete this whole semester overseas, mm, although I have no idea about how SIP is going to work, but we will we'll sort that out later, one, one step at a time. Mm, okay. You still can work on the project and everything overseas. It's not a massive problem. Okay. You can still text each other, all this stuff. It's not a massive problem. Okay, I've done research work with people overseas just by using pure email and decades ago called MSN Messenger. So that is doable. We, I have done work like collaborating on how to write a paper, collaborating on a research paper through MSN Messenger. Or last time you could even call ICQ, if you still remember that such thing. So it's not a problem. Okay, any problem so far? Do you have class after this? Yes, what class do you have? Structural. Structural by Mr. Paula. Structural by you. OK, so I think it starts from three to five or something like that. So go and take a rest first. It's very exhausting learning from home. I know that. So take a rest before you come for next class. OK. So anything you can still WhatsApp me. I'm always online. Okay, that's all for today. Have fun.